Hi everybody, this is Kimberly Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Today we will be stitching out Rachel. Rachel's a cool color black bag. Um, she'll come in eight horizontal sizes and three vertical sizes. Um, this is what we're going to be demonstrating on the video here today. Uh, I think I am going to move this over just a little bit. So this is a little bit larger. It was hard to get that proportion right when moving it to that size bag. So it will be a slightly over about a half an inch. Anyway, um, this is Rachel, and she is fully lined, as always. Here's this one with the tulip pink vinyl. This is the um, My Punk Broidery vinyl, um, the Fairy Shimmer. This is My Punk Broidery, the Glitter Glow, Orange, Robin Egg, and whatever the green is called. On the back, I did use just some regular vinyl. Uh, the D-ring straps, I did uh, the... Neon from My Punk Broidery. The zipper is from Indo Love Creations. The zipper polo is from Blue Cala, although you can get these from other vendors now. This zipper polo is from Luke's Hardware. Um, the D-rings are from uh, My Punk, and this zipper is from Wizardry Stitchery. So um, get your supplies together, and I hope you like this bag. What else to say? I think that's about it. It's going to be a short intro. Um, if you like my bags, please consider subscribing to the channel so you'll get notices when I have new patterns um, videos out. And also you can visit my Facebook group, Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Uh, my Etsy shop, everything will be listed in the description down below for you. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, let's go over the supplies we're gonna need first. I'm going to need a zipper, which I forgot to cut. That's okay. I'm using zipper by the yard, which just means it's um zipper without the poles on it. And you just go ahead and cut it as wide as you need. But you can use pre-made zipper as well. Let me cut this real quick and put a pole on it. This zipper is actually a little bit wider than most zipper tape. So we'll go over that when we're placing the zipper and I'll tell you more about it then. Um, did I just have a bag for this? Okay, I lost the bag already. Oh, it was a rubber band. Some of the vendors put it in plastic bags, some bands. Okay, so and then we need a pole to go with it and I know I have a pole in here. I love, these are my absolute favorite poles. I got them from Blue Cala, but there's other vendors in the states who now sell them as well they're so pretty i just love them they look classy for anything okay so we need our zipper and our pole and then we need our three front materials which i'm using um glow in the dark from my punk portrait primarily so this is our our base a which pretty much fills most of the uh bag it sort forms the, the base. Since I'm using vinyl, I'll end up trimming some of this out, but if you're using cotton, then you wouldn't. And then this is the B, color base B. And then this is the C for the top panel. And then just because I'm trying to get rid of this particular vinyl, it kind of doesn't match, but I'm using this for the back. This is a great way to de-stash. Nobody really, unless you're selling up in high-end shops, most people don't care about the back as much. So this is a particular vinyl I'm not a big fan of. It's neat looking, but it doesn't do well for bags. It's very stretchy. So I have a lot of it because I had bought some from Wizard Juice to Tree. And then my punk also came out with some. So I had to buy some from her. So anyway, this is my back. What I'm using at least. And then I have this um, for the inside linings. I didn't interface it. You'll find if you interface, unless you're on a multi-needle machine, that's really powerful. Interfacing the lining on these bags makes it so thick. Unlike a uh, regular sewn bag where the lining and the exterior are totally separate when you sew it all together, your lining and your exterior is all sewn together in, in the hoop bag. So you're having to turn through all those layers. So interfacing just doesn't necessarily work very well. This, I wish I could find my, um, it's buried in some bins my lightweight fusible because I found, I don't even remember where I ordered this, but it is, you can see, probably see through it in the camera. It is so light. 
I wish I would have interfaced it, but that's okay. So I'm gonna set that aside. Set my vinyls aside. And then I have, I ended up using this neon because I had some scraps sitting there. I have two strap connectors that are three inches by three quarters inch. And then the corresponding D-ring strap connectors are for the D-rings, I mean. And you'll see a thing to my colors. I love rainbow stuff. Okay, so we'll use these. Um, this actually is a little bit more heavy, like um, marine vinyl. So I don't think I really need to interface this like I do typically with vinyl straps. I hope I don't eat my words, but I don't even know who's going to have this bag. But I think it's fine. It's It's got a nice like like canvas on the back. So I'm just going to put these together. I almost always end up losing these things, so I like to clip them together and put a clip on them and put them in my little clip bin here so I don't lose them. So just like that. Okay, and now I've gone ahead and stitched the outline. This is a seven by 10 bag. Already I'm not sure if I'm feeling, I might move this over just a little bit. I'm trying to get the proportions the same in the vertical bag where it's just a horizontal is um, hard. But I wanted to do a couple of vertical bags. I don't do a lot of vertical bags, but this pattern is just fun. So you can make so much out of it. You can add embroidery in all these different places. So it's a lot of fun um, to do. And Or you can just leave the solid colors like I'm doing for the color block look. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stitched this out. This is our general bag outline. And you'll see up here we have our zipper placement lines. And it's hard to see in the poly mesh, so let me keep it against the bed. Now here I have some tick marks, and these are to mark the centers. So if you're not really good at guesstimating your material um, placement when you're folding it down, and of course I can't find a pen, uh, you guys are just going to have to pretend that I did this because I have lost my pen. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so there's one here. And one here, some bags I might only have one on it. I'm gonna turn it around so it's facing me so it's easier to see. But if even if there's only one, you can still line it up and draw the, by using these lines as the extension. So what you do is you just line your ruler up with both of those tick marks and just draw in the line. I like to draw it in pretty thick so I can see it from the back too. In this way, you can line up your material. Let's say you have a, a fussy cut motif that you're trying to get right in the center of the bag. You can lightly fold it in half and line it up with there. So that's there. Again, I don't have that on all the bags. I've been trying to remember and add them, but it just helps line everything up. Important down the road will be these two tick marks, so make note of them. This is where we're going to line our base panel up, so it'll be vinyl from here down cotton from here down and this part will be from this top fabric that comes down to here so I try to overlap at least a half an inch so we're basically by um, applicating these together we're creating a new panel of fabric or vinyl in this case oh. so the first thing that we need to do is position our zipper pole or I'm sorry our zipper on here now this bag will support you can either use a number three zipper or a number five zipper. And the way that works so you can do that is there's three placement lines here. Okay. If you're using a number three zipper, you're going to center the zipper between these two outer lines. Okay. Like this. That's number three. A number three zipper tape in general is one inch wide. The three responds to how wide the millimeters of the zipper teeth are approximately three millimeters. Give or take, some of these newer zippers with the, like this, the resin teeth or the nylon polyester teeth, they are, they may be this wide, but they're taller. So it does take up a little bit more room. So, but if you're using a number three, you're gonna line it up here in between these two lines, tape it down, make sure there's zipper poles on the end you want it, and then make sure you overlap each end if you're using zipper tape, you can just come and come over a half an inch on this left side, or I'm sorry, right side of the bag. Um, but you want to keep your zipper pull out of this area. So over here, you want to usually have like one to two inches extra. 
So that's if you're using the number three zipper tape. But we're using number five zipper tape. And just to show you, this is actually not most number five zipper tape is one and a quarter inches. This zipper tape is actually, if you can see it, one and three eighths inch. So it's a little bit wider, but it's gonna work in our bag anyway. Uh, always remember to burn your edges of your zipper to melt it so that it doesn't fray. Especially these, these zippers tend to fray a lot more than the other ones. So I'm a little, I wanna be careful of that because I saw somebody had a, a striped one that came all the way apart. So anyway, so melt your ends and then I'll redo that on the left side of the bag when we trim the bag. I'll melt whatever I cut it off, I'll go ahead and trim it. I'm not teaching you how to put a zipper pull on in this video, um, but let me see if I can get it on. Why is this, there we go. I used to have to use a fork to do it and there's tools you can use to help you, but I've gotten it down really good now. Sometimes I can even do it in the air, but usually I just kind of get it started and lay it on the table and just pull it along. Okay, so what's important about the zipper pull when you're doing a number five is on the back of the zipper, you see a line that is formed from the negative space. This is where, when you open your zipper, this is the teeth in the front of this. So this is a negative space formed by those teeth. This is where you wanna line up. And then sometimes like on the white zipper, it's hard to see. So what I do is I just go ahead and draw with a pen, a line right down the line so I can see it. It's usually okay when you're up close, but just in case you need to do that, because it's on the bottom of the zipper, nobody's gonna see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up this line with the center line of our bag placement, or zipper placement. I always start on the right-hand side and anchor the zipper down. I just get a better result that way than if I just kind of lay it and just willy-nilly try and figure it out. So, I am gonna put the zipper pull on the left-hand side of the bag. So when I'm talking, I'm left, right, top, bottom. I'm always talking about in regard to the bag, not the hoop, because I don't know how you're gonna have the design positioned in your hoop. Okay, so once I get that anchored, so I know this is centered on this little corner, I turn it around gently, because you don't wanna risk unhooping it. So just go gently. And then I should have moved my hoop attachment out of the way. There we go. Then what I do is I work on the bottom of the zipper first and I use the skinny one half inch transfer tape by 3M and I just kind of roll the zipper or walk it down that line, making sure that that middle negative space is over the center line. And I try to put the tape right on the very edge so that it doesn't get the needle gummied. This tape usually is pretty good. It will stay um, tacky for about three turns or four turns. Not as much on tearaway, I had discovered. But if your needle, your needle does get gummied up from it, you can just rub it down with some rubbing alcohol and it'll get rid of any of the adhesive. And I just keep doing that and lining it up and rolling it down until I'm all the way at the end. Okay, and then I just tape it like that. And then I'm gonna put a little piece of tape to hold that zipper pole so it doesn't move and come loose because, you know, it's jingly jangly and I don't want it to get stuck in my um, needle path. So just tape that to your hoop. And then I'm going to put a couple pieces at the top, just because usually you don't need it, but some of these tapes are a little bit curvy, and you might get a pleat as it's stitching down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run color step two now, which is just going to tack this zipper down. I'm gonna leave this thread color in because it's dark so you can see it easier. And then I'm gonna to switch to a different thread color because I actually am gonna try and use uh, glow in the dark thread for the satin stitching. Okay, I'm gonna run color stop two and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. 
um, hopefully since I left that darker thread in, you can see that we just tacked this down. But this is a good opportunity to check and make sure you got your zipper correct. So you can always take a ruler along here and it's right on the dot, one quarter inch, just under one quarter inch. So if it's not correct or it's not even or one side's lopsided, now's a good time that you can go ahead and take the stitches out and redo it. So at the end you want the reveal, which is how much zipper tape is showing in your seam. This here, how much of this zipper is showing. You want that to be even on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna start with our lining on the back. Now, I'm gonna give you a little caveat here. I digitized this so that you do the lining in the top panel first. But to be honest, if you wanna skip ahead and do these two panels first, it's fine. My rationale for that though is, I'd like to have, this is very stable right now. Um, everything's tight in the hoop. I'd rather get my lining and everything on here and get the zipper more stabilized. So in case there's any pull from this applique, but I could be totally wrong on that. So if this is uncomfortable for you to have this lining hanging off this hoop for the next four or five steps, then wait and just do this last. But I'm showing you how to do it the way I designed it and digitized it because that's what makes sense in my head. So you're gonna take, this is the wrong side, you can see it's a little bit wider, of the lining. And we're gonna line that up with the bottom of the zipper right here. We're gonna do what's called stitch and flip. We're gonna stitch it down and then flip it and top stitch it. So you wanna make sure this is lined up with the bottom of the zipper. And it doesn't matter if it's the uh, number three zipper or the number five zipper. I've digitized it so it works with both. Okay, and then we're gonna put just a little snip right here across the middle. Now carefully, you're gonna flip this over and I like to hold the lining at the top. And you can go ahead and roll this up and pin it or tape it to the top here out of your way so that you don't have to worry about it coming underneath while we work on the bottom, okay? And then we're gonna take our top panel which I'm using the orange for. And we're gonna lay that down, right side down as well. So, yes, this is, okay, so we're gonna lay this right side facing down against the zipper and tape it down. And again, if you need to help centering it, Fold it in half or write the center on here and line it up. But I don't need to worry about that with this one because it's solid. I'm not trying to line anything up. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing and tape this down. Put a piece in the middle. I lost my pieces of extra tape. For a second there, I thought I hadn't started recording again. I'm gonna use that, still leave that darker thread in for right now, just because it's gonna be in the underneath and we're not gonna see it. Okay, so this is all stitched down and it's over the top of our hoop. So now we're gonna run step three, which is just to tack those two together. And then therefore we know we have a stable top and we don't have to worry about it coming loose. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we just got that tape down. We're gonna remove the tape and we're gonna leave that as is. And I just realized I totally forgot to tell you why I stitched this out. I stitched this out in the placement step because you might want to um, stitch this out on, I'm using big rectangles, right? So there's gonna be a lot of waste when we trim out the excess, especially using vinyl. Um, if you're using cotton, I don't recommend trimming out the extra anyway. But if you're using vinyl, there's gonna be, we wanna reduce the bulk in it. So this is what these pieces are stitched here for. You can stitch this on a uh, tearaway and make a template. So you can just make sure that you have at least three quarters inch all the way around this size and then lay it down. And that way you can do all three of them. Um, 
Secondarily, you might want to audition if you have a printed material and you want to try and fussy cut it. You can lay this on top of it if you're using the poly mesh. You can see through it and kind of audition where you want those fussy cutting. So that's why I do this on the die placement so you have that template. So now we're ready to go ahead and lay our base panel color A, which is our big um, panel. And let's see. I think I gotta make sure I have this the right direction. Yes, okay. So I put a little arrow there because this is eight inch by 8.5 inch. So it's kind of hard to see what's the right direction for it. So we're gonna line it up just so it's underneath those two tick marks. And then we're gonna tape it down. Do I have this cut the wrong way? I might've marked it the wrong way. Let's see. I might've measured it wrong. No, that was right. I need a longer overhang there. Okay, so again, here's the little tick marks right here and here. And you just wanna line that up underneath them. It doesn't have to reach, reach them perfectly because you see this is where this is gonna get trimmed at, but it just gives you a ballpark so that you can make sure this is even on here. And I'm just gonna look and make sure my seam allowance looks right. Then go ahead and take this down. And I'm gonna to switch to a different thread now because I wanna use a glow in the dark thread, I'm gonna try it. And I'm afraid if I um, use this dark thread, it'll show underneath the glow in the dark thread. But I don't wanna use the, um, the glow in the dark thread will be fine for this step actually. You don't wanna use the glow in the dark thread for construction, it's not strong enough for that. So I'm gonna swap out the thread. I'm gonna run color stop four, which is gonna give us um, this placement so we can lay this panel here and I'll be right back. Yeah, I knew this was gonna be trouble. <laughs> you can't see it. So I'm gonna try and draw over it with a pen. But anyway, here's the, the line. I use the glow in the dark after all because I don't want that to show through. So I don't know if you can see it, but right here. So this is the piece that's gonna stay in our hoop. Um, or I'm sorry, this is the piece that's gonna stay. So we wanna, we're gonna put color B, base color B over this. So this is our placement for that. So we wanna trim out this extra material here. Did I get zoomed in all of a sudden? Sometimes it does that when I come back from re recording. We wanna um, trim out this excess, leave about a half an inch just so that we reduce the bulk of all that vinyl in our seam allowance. So, and I apologize if you can't see the line, but you'll see it on your own um, hoop when you're up there close. So again, just eyeball it. You don't have to measure and be perfect, but we just wanna trim it. So come up here and start and come in at about a half an inch and trim out this extra. And what this is gonna do is allow our bag to not be so bulky when we turn it and also it'll give you a cleaner edge on the seams because all this bulk won't be in there. And see what I mean by there's a lot of waste. This is a whole big piece. I'm sure I can use it for strap connectors or something but um, it's hard to say right now. Okay so now we're going to go ahead and lay this piece down so we want to make sure we Cover this by about a half an inch at this corner and up above there. The reason is it's much easier to trim it away if you can hold on to by about a half an inch, in my experience. So if you think I've cut these too big, there's a reason why. It's just so much easier to take the applique, um, trim it away when you have something to hold on to and that little bit of edge. And I'm gonna be very careful and leave this tape on here only for a few seconds because um, in my experience, the tape can really residue on these shiny vinyls. One other thing, always keep your device, whatever it is, I'm using a four in one, do not put your fingers in here. Keep this device so if something looks like it's gonna push up, you can reach in with your device and not your fingers. 
So we're going to go ahead and run step five, which is going to give us the tack down for here and for that side. Now, that's going to be really fast, so I'm just going to leave you on camera for that. Let's see how this is curling up. If I was worried, I'd reach in with my device here, not my finger. If the needle hits the device and breaks, worst case scenario, you might throw your machine out of I just realized um, I need to stop this. I'm going to have to edit this. So I have it coming off here to do this placement. I'm going to have to change that and make it a different color because otherwise you won't be able to trim this. Okay. And two people have tested this already and not told me that. So I'll have to fix that. So we need this little um, piece to come up here as well. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and try and trim as close to this bean stitch as we can without cutting into it. And I find that my other applique scissors are not sharp anymore. I find that if you put the blade against, this is the blade, if you put it against the stitches, you can get the cleanest cut. This particular vinyl has that kind of knit material. And in my experience, if you don't trim it really well, see I'm almost holding my scissors upright. If you don't trim it really well, then it will shred as the satin stitching is happening. That knit layer underneath will shred and then you'll see it in your satin stitching and nobody wants that. So I'm just getting really close. This is not an area that you want to be doing fast. Take your time. The other thing you have to be concerned about is these scissors may actually scratch the vinyl. So the more you keep them upright against that stitch, the less likely you're gonna scratch your vinyl. So get your favorite applique scissors. These are from Klaus. They're actually not as good in, as the gingers in my opinion, but my gingers are not working really well. So I need to find it somewhere to go take my scissors to get sharpened. I started got buying all Kai scissors, but Kai doesn't make a pair like this. And to be honest, I'm not thrilled with their applique scissors. They're different and their blade is not as strong. So it's kind of disappointing. I wish they'd come out with a pair like this with the Kai blade, but the little bevel there. Okay, and then examine it and look and see if you're happy enough with it. And I am. I got close enough. I'm happy. I did a 4.5 mil um, satin stitch, so it should cover pretty well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this step now so I can show you what it's going to do now. And it's going to do the tack down for this piece. And then we can go ahead and trim that away as well. So that's part of five now, so I'm going to separate that out and make it part of six. Actually, you know what, I think, ignore that. Go back in time, Kimberly. I'm just gonna do it as part of the placement stitch for this. So it'll be part of four. That is the easiest solution, then I don't have to change my PDF. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out as long as I'm here. And so the same thing, so you get to see it again. We wanna leave a little bit of material here, such that when we fold this down, oh my God, this is gonna be so cool. When we fold this down, it creates a bind, or a bind, a bond with that material, and the satin stitching and bean stitching will actually kind of seam them together. It's appliquing them together. So just go ahead and trim out this. In theory, you could leave this alone because it's at the top, so it's not going to hurt as much. But again, with vinyl, the more bulk you have in it, the more weight, the harder it is to turn the bag. So that's kind of what I'm thinking and trimming all this extra away. So but imagine if you had just fussy cut this out, you could have saved all that vinyl. Because and if you had done that, you'd have three quarters here, three quarters there. So it would get overlapped still. Okay, so now we're ready to do the 
satin stitch for this section. So that's gonna take a few minutes. Now, one thing you wanna do, I'm okay right now, check your bobbin. There's nothing that you that's worse than having to restart a satin stitch in the middle of, or redo it in the middle of a satin stitch. It never looks clean. I have enough for this one, but I'll probably have to change my bobbin for the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this offline because I'm not sure how this invisible thread or this glow in the dark thread is gonna do. So I might get frustrated. So this is step six and I will be right back. Okay, so far so good. I'm pretty excited y'all. It's stitched out really well. And I did forget to mention, you might wanna consider, um, oh my edge run did get caught there. You might wanna consider putting extra stabilizer underneath this to support the satin stitches depending on what kind of vinyl you're using especially it can cut into it. I just realized there's actually cut this, so I didn't think there was a negative space here, but this was actually the salvage of the vinyl roll, and the glitter doesn't go all the way through, but I just caught it. It's gonna be on the seam. Lucky me. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and fold down our top panel. So I like to do this against a firm surface so I can make sure that I don't unhoop it. But it's best to have a boning tool. And of course I've replaced, misplaced my boning tool. Um, I don't know if this ruler will work. Oh, actually I can use a little iron. That's what this piece is on here. And you just kind of rub it down to help keep it uh, seam folded. And then we're gonna put, again, in the seam allowance, we're gonna tape this down as solidly as we can. So we don't want that vinyl to start to roll up on us. So the top stitch, you'll notice we didn't do the top stitch yet for this vinyl um, or for this piece. And that's on purpose because again, um, we're doing this to get the applique done out of the way first. You do have to make sure you have this really taut though because it's gonna come back and do that top stitch and to be honest, if you wanted to, you could do it now, put the lining down on the back, run the top stitch, and then just pull the lining back up. The reason I didn't do it that way is because I think people get confused about flipping back and forth with the lining. So I didn't do it that way, okay. But since I don't wanna put the tape here, I'm trying to make sure I tape it down. I'm actually gonna use a really, the one inch piece of tape on the edge. I don't want that vinyl to come up on me while it's doing the satin stitching because I want it to stay firmly down. And you can see right here, it's trying to come up. So I'm gonna use a big piece of tape to hold this down on the side. I'm still pulling it tautly there. This will be in the seam allowance, so if the tape mars the vinyl, it's okay. Flip it over here and do the same thing. And once the um, tack down for the satin stitch is done, then you'll be good. Okay, so just like that. So I'll go ahead and run that. It's just a few step stitches. So it's step seven. I should have trimmed that long tail. It's best to take a couple of steps, stitches, and then trim it off. Because sometimes it'll loop into it while you're stitching. And you see if you think it's getting weird up here, then you can kind of press it down. All right, so there we go, just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna, first we're gonna remove the tape, and then we're going to trim underneath this bean stitch. And then we're gonna run step eight, which is the satin stitch. And I think I'm still good on bobbin, I am. Always remember to check your bobbin before you do any kind of major fill or satin stitch. So I'll show you one more time. So you wanna try and keep the scissors as upright as you can. You're gonna come in from the side and get as close to that bean stitch as you can, but don't cut into it. That's why I do a triple stitch because 
if you do cut into one piece of it, the rest of it will hold steady. I follow this um, YouTuber, Angela Jasmina. She's such a sweetheart. Well, at least she seems it on her YouTube. You never know in real life. But anyway, she uses these little orange Fisker scissors for this on her shirts. And I keep meaning to order some of those and give it a try because they look like it's so easy for her. She whips through it. She's usually doing um, cotton or HTV, but she just whips through it. So I'm like, I need to try those. And Fiskars is, are good scissors as well. All right. And they're cheap, so when they get dull, she just buys a new pair. Um, and now you have your satin stitch right there from the other piece. So you want to make sure you don't cut into that because it's not going to get redone. And again, be a turtle or a hare. Not Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, I said a turtle or a hare. You don't want to be a hare. You want to be a turtle. Go slow. I know you're watching paint dry, right? But the slower you go, the better finish you get all around. All right. Perfect. All right. So this is all my scraps from not fussy cutting those pieces. So that's a lot of scraps, but you do your comfort zone. Just remember if you do fussy cut them, you need three quarters extra on each piece. All right, so we're gonna run number eight. That's gonna take a, a couple minutes since it's a satin stitch and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that's all done now. So there we go, our satin stitching is all done. So what we're gonna do now is turn to the back of the hoop and fold our lining down. And we're gonna tape that down uh, tautly to the bottom of the hoop. Maybe the extra tape and then just finger press alongside the seam. If for some reason your lining is too long and hitting your hoop attachment, you can trim it. Because I, I gave you generous cutting. Okay, so now I'm gonna run step nine, which is the top stitching here. And then 10, which is the D-ring strap connector placements, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and run the stitch, D-ring stitch, stitch placements. There's one up here, one here, one here, and one here. But I can't even see the stitches here. If you run into that, just look on the back and find it. Right here it is. And just draw from the back with a line that you'll be able to see from the front. All right. So you can see these lines here from the back. So if you are doing the D-ring strap placements on the sides, which we use for a wristlet strap, you want to line it up with the top the top of the D-ring strap connector here. So it's just going to be a little bit under your top stitching. Because I don't know what size width you're going to be using, um, I stitched this, I think, three quarters to an inch. So you want to do that. Then over here, you want to line it up with the inside. So here's the outside, the inside of that placement. And you can get a ruler out and measure if you need to. So what I mean by lining it up with the inside, you're gonna have the D-ring strap connector. This edge of it is gonna line up with this edge and you want it to overlap about a half an inch. What I do when I'm doing the top one is I make it so that the, the straight bar of the D-ring falls just at my top stitching. You can make yours a little bit more short or longer depending on your needs on your machine. 
but on the last few steps, the zipper pull will be out of the way, but you do need your zipper, um, your presser foot to be able to get through here. So if you have the D-ring up here, that's not gonna work. Okay, so that was on the inside there. So now this is on the inside. So we want the inside edge of the D-ring strap connector to be lined up with this edge. Again, a half an inch over and your hard, your straight line should be right above your top stitching. And then tape it down. Now, if you're on a Janome 500E like me or 550E, you may already know this, but the Janome doesn't handle thicknesses really well. And when it goes to pull the tail, it goes all the way around and it could hit the D-ring strap connector. So what you can do, if you don't already know this, what I do is I listen, I have the thread cutter engaged, right? I listen for the thread cutter to finish and then I reach back here underneath in your presser foot lifter, right? If you pull up higher, it'll come up and clear that. So I just kind of reach back and pull up and let it move the hoop. So keep your arm off the hoop, but lift it up there. There is a convertible foot that you can get that you can change the size. And I did buy that, but I have not played with it because it's got a wide foot. So you have to be really careful when you're coming over here to the right edge. And most of my designs, I make them so that they take as much advantage of the hoop as possible. And I don't know if my designs will work if I have that extra wide over here. So I haven't done it yet. Okay, so I'm gonna run step 11, and then we'll be right back. So we're done with that step. Trim off the threads, tails, and remove the tape so it doesn't get caught in your final seam. And now we're ready to add the back lining and the front exterior. Now, I didn't mention it before, and I should have, if you wanted to do any additional embroidery on here, you could do so now, but you would want to make sure you roll the lining up on the back of the hoop first, do your embroidery and then put it back down. Okay, so we're gonna turn to the back of the hoop. Ooh, it didn't do so great with the... <laughs> uh, oh well, I wish I would've noticed that sooner the invisible thread or glow in the dark thread. We're just gonna pretend it's not like that, right? Actually, what I'll do is I'll probably just go ahead and um, trim this away a little when I'm all done and use a lighter because it's some kind of polyester and just burn it so it doesn't come undone. I should have changed it to the regular thread. I was pressing my luck. I think the top of the satin stitching, I think, did okay. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't do too good. Okay, so let's turn to the back of the hoop first. And we're gonna take our second lining panel and we're gonna position it right side facing down again. I'm turning the hoop around so it works so I don't unhoop it. And then position it with the top of your zipper this time. Okay, so I'm a little upside down here. And then we're gonna go ahead and tape it down. Especially if you're new to in the hoop um, bags, please make sure you use plenty of tape. A lot of people use painter's tape, blue painter's tape. And that's a nice solution as well. Um, whatever works for you because you don't want all your work to go and be ruined because the something got bunched up. Now we're going to take our exterior panel and just like we did with the lining, we're going to line it up carefully. We're going to line it up with the top of our zipper. So we're going to go over our D-ring strap connectors, even it up to one side or fold it in half and march, match that tick mark and we're going to tape it in the middle here too because I find what happens if you don't tape it in the middle the presser foot because there's stretch in this now I do have it the stretch going the opposite direction this time but usually I have it that way so the stretch will push this up like that so make sure you tape it down 
on the centerpiece as well. And for this step, you just really need to get the top taped down because we're just doing the zipper. When we get to the step where we do the exterior, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we tape down this whole thing tautly so there's no stretch in it. All right, I'm gonna turn this upside down so it's flat. I always try and do this against a firm surface, not like I was just doing, because I was getting really anxious that I was gonna unhoop it. Okay, so I'm gonna tape this down right there in the center. This tape came undone. Okay, so we're gonna stitch the first stitch here, which is a tack down, and then I'll be right back with you. That's step 12. Okay, so we've stitched that down. So we're gonna to flip to the back of the hoop and we're gonna remove the tape and save this off because you can usually reuse it a few times like I mentioned before. And I forgot to mention, it's in the PDF, but at this point you should be using, especially if you're using vinyl, a 9014 needle if you're not already. I didn't switch my needle and it's probably my satin stitch cut in a little bit more. I recommend doing the 7511 for the satin stitching the 9014 is going to make the holes a little bit bigger and I just forgot to change mine okay so I'm going to tape this down on the sides like this I'm going to flip it over and hold this lining like we did before so it doesn't get tucked underneath there and now we're going to flip it out of the way now normally um on a lot of people's in the hoop bags and even on mine at this point you would fold this up remember stitch and flip we're going to stitch it and then flip it up and do the top stitching. The reason I'm not doing that, and why I usually don't in vinyl bags, is because there's a lot of bulk up here with the vinyl. And because of the construction of the in the hoop bags, as I mentioned before, the uh, everything is sewn together. So the lining of, you have two layers of vinyl here, two layers of uh, lining and the zipper. So what I find happens, if you go ahead and pull this up, and finger press it and top stitch through here so you have top stitching on the back. What I find happens is you can get a little bit of a pleat at the corners. This is especially true with this thicker vinyl. Like this vinyl would probably be okay, this one, but this one's that thick flannel backed. It's really thick and cushy. It would not, it'll leave pleats. So I don't top stitch on the back. If you have an issue with your, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, I can't speak tonight. If you have an issue with the back coming up, you can put some double stick tape in there before you turn the bag and hold it down and that'll hold it down against that seam. I don't usually have that issue, so I don't really worry about it. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this stitched down and run this step, this step here, which is 13, because we do want the top stitching on the lining because if we don't put the top stitching on the lining, then the lining might poke up and get caught in your zipper. So we do want to top stitch through the lining. Okay, so we're gonna run step 13. Again, make sure that your lining doesn't come loose so you can fold it over like this, get your hoop back in position, and then fold it out of your way. So I'm gonna run 13 and I'll be right back. Okay, I should have listened to my own words and centered this. <laughs> Yes, it's not centered very well, so I'm not going to have very much of my seam over here. Ooh, yikes. Okay, so we're all done with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull our exterior back out of the way, and now it's time to open up our zipper. So very carefully. Go ahead and open. You might have to move your D-ring strap connector out of your way. And I'm not going to leave this taped because this tape, again, will stick you up my vinyl. So I'm just going to kind of leave it towards this part so it won't get caught in my seam allowance. And then make sure your D-ring strap connectors are folded down. And now this time is when you want to get your exterior, your back um, taped down tautly. So I'm going to use some of this thicker tape to hold it down better. And I'm actually going to have to kind of air... I don't know what happened down here. It's fine, but up there, it's not. I don't know what I did. I'm going to have to 
take advantage of the stretch a little bit and pull this because I messed up. And I'm gonna tape this down really good. One time I can take advantage of the stretch of this vinyl. Should catch that seam. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tautly all the way around. Okay, so step 14, what it's gonna do, again, because we mentioned all the stretch in the, some of the vinyls, it's gonna start up here, it's gonna stitch down to the middle, and it's gonna come over here and run some travel steps, stitches, that's on purpose, and then it's gonna come up here and start up here and come down here. And I think you can kind of see right now, see that little bulk right there? If I did not have this broken up, and I just went like this, when the presser foot comes up here, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get a pleat. Even if I have it taped down really well, just because there's inherent stretch in this material. Now, if you interface this, you probably could avoid that, but I'm not, my machine can't handle all those layers. So I stitch it here, do some travel stitch, and then bring it up here. And so that gives you time, if something's out of whack, you can stop the machine and reposition it or redistribute that stretch. You don't want to pleat up here where it's going to be really noticeable. If you do end up getting a small pleat, it's going to be better for it to be here in the bottom of the bag and it's where it's more disguised than at the top of the bag. So that's the reason I do it this way. There is a reason for my madness. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here and tape to try and reduce any of that stretch. I'm going to tape this down really well. My goal is to have it taped so I don't get any of that stretch affecting me. But sometimes you can't avoid it. Like, especially to see how wide this is and it's having a hard time sticking to the stabilizer and the hoop because there's not enough room. So what I'm gonna do while it's stitching is I kind of guide along with my knee, my finger out of the way. And then if it looks like, again, like I said, if it looks like it's gonna get off whack, then I come up here and fix it. The reason why I have that travel stitch here is because if you come here, down here and stop, and it tries to go up here to start the next piece, it's gonna go zoop, and you have a D-ring strap connector here, a zipper pull here, and it's gonna hit them. So this way I'm forcing it to come over here, and then the natural path to start up here is to go straight up. Okay, so I'm gonna run 14 and I'll be right back. Okay, well I really cut that close. <laughs> I should have used my centering line. <laughs> See how close I got that? Oh, lordy. But we won't be able to trim that down very much. Okay, so we're almost to the last step. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this tape because we're gonna stitch again close to the seam. So, um, again, there's always a reason why I do stuff. So I come back around because this is a sewing trick. For certain vinyls, uh, the seams, the stressed part of the seam, like at the corners, it'll pull on it because it's not cotton. Like with cotton, the thread gets ingrained into the actual weave, right? It needle up and down and it penetrates through that weave and gets part of that weave. With vinyl, that doesn't happen. So what can happen is you can see the stitches in the seam. So the trick is to do a second layer of stitches just inside the seam allowance, about 1 16th of an inch and that helps take the stress off that joint. So I do that second layer as part of my lining. So mostly you wanna hit it here, here, and at the corners. So this piece is not gonna get double stitched. This is the bottom and it's usually okay. Um, so we're gonna do, turn to the back. And before we pull the lining down, we need to remove the stabilizer behind our zipper. It's much easier to do that now than after you turn the, you know, you're trying to turn your bag. So what I do is I get my seam ripper, and since I'm using poly mesh, it's pretty easy. I put this the seam ripper underneath and poke it up so that I can see the blade. And then I just kind of slice it along slowly, making sure I don't catch my fabric or my zipper. And this blade needs sharpened. And just glide it all the way across. And it kind of pulls the stabilizer out of the seam as it's doing it. Now when you do the other side, flip it around and hold the stabilizer with your other hand, your fingers, to give that same tautness to it that you had originally, and then do the same thing. And you'll see the same thing happens. It'll pull out as you're cutting 
and so you don't see that stabilizer in that seam anymore. And then I just kind of poke it through at the end. I don't use the seam allow or the seam ripper for the ends because a couple of times I accidentally cut the fabric. So I like to do the plates like that so I can make sure I don't cut the fabric. All right. Now, because by nature of being in the hoop bags, the linings tend to be a little bit looser, we wanna pull this lining down as tautly as we can. So if you think it's too tight, it's probably not tight enough. So I usually start in the center and I kind of pull it as tautly as I can. And then I just kind of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit so I can actually get it adhered to the hoop. So I wanna leave at least a half an inch for the seam allowance though. So I'm gonna trim it down. I just looked here to make sure I ball that we have at least a half an inch. Now I can take directly to the stabilizer, which is a little bit more uh, sturdy than trying to take to the other material. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that second lining down. There we go. Tightly. And then I'm going to just tape it. And then I'm going to get each corner. And make sure you check these corners here. If they look like they're a little lopsided, go ahead and add another piece of tape there. So right here, because my last bag actually ended up going like that on it. So let me heed my own warning since I've already made a couple of mistakes and put a piece of tape there. All right, now your machine says you have two more steps, but you don't. 15 is our last step. So as mentioning before, the reason I put these little travel stitches, here's some and here's some, is because we don't want the machine, the presser foot to come up here and hit that stuff. Most machines are programmed to go to the center when the design is done. And some machines will even put a back tack there. We don't want that to happen. So we have a little stitch down here it's red to tell you to stop. And so that's step 16, you don't run 16. After this step, we're done and um, that's it, the bag's done. Okay, so I'm gonna run 15 and I'll be right back. Alrighty. So you'll see that I left a pretty generous turning hole for this bag because it's vertical, it's harder to turn than the more horizontal one. So I left you a little bit bigger hole. And you'll see I had the same travel stitch here. So I came down here, stopped, came over here, stitched, and then came up here and stopped. Now always look at the back of your hoop before you unhoop and make sure your lining did not come untangled or pleated or anything like that anywhere. So mine looks good. So I'm gonna remove all the tape I can now. And then we'll remove the stabilizer and I like to trim out um oh, I didn't do a very good job down here either I got just in the side of the seam lines with that one I should have been using my own centering lines <laughs> do as the pdf says not as Kimberly does um anyway it's okay it's all good I like to trim out the stabilizer especially the poly mesh stabilizer because I save those scraps to use to support satin stitching when it's needed. So what I do is I take my good Kai scissors and I just start on one side and I kind of fold back. The lining usually is what I start with and just kind of cut as close to it as I can because what I want is the stabilizer out of the seam allowance is the goal. So I try to cut into it as close as I can but being mindful that I don't actually cut into my seam and it kind of slices if you just kind of hold it you don't have to chop make the cut you know the what do you call that the chopping position you don't have to do that it's like a uh, wrapping paper if you just hold the scissors it'll just cut right along there and just keep making sure your fabric is out of the way so you're not cutting your fabric you only want to be cutting the stabilizer 
this probably isn't as important of an issue in uh, cotton woven as it is in vinyl. But we have so many thick layers here and we want to cut those layers out. So I can fold this back actually and do that. So again, I just try and get as close to the seam as I can. And then just kind of slice it along like that. And be a little bit more careful with the top because you don't have as much seam allowance up here. And you have your D-ring strap connector too. So you don't want to cut into that or your zipper. The top is not as important though as it is on the others. Okay, so if you are cutting, um, if you have the D-ring strap connectors on the sides, you want to make sure you do not cut them off. You want them to stay overhung just like these are. So it's really important. So what we want to do down here is we want to um, notch this. I like the notch to go this way. It just makes it easier to close. So we don't need a whole inch here. So I cut the notch down to about a half an inch on either side. And then I can go ahead and trim the rest of the bag and keep that notch. Uh, we'll just notch this in here. Let me just fold this out of the way first. Let's just trim this bottom here to about a quarter of an inch. All right, and then we'll cut our lining so that it's up to those notches there. Remember, we're doing a half an inch for this part because we're going to close this. Doing a good job cutting today, am I? Okay, so we have a little tab here, and I like to kind of crease this because when we go to close it, what I'm going to do is put glue right here, but I like to have this already creased so that it's easy to reach it back up. And I actually kind of pull it down a little bit just so that that piece of the lining is a little bit more taut when I glue it. Okay, and then on the rest of it, we're going to go ahead and trim one quarter inch. And then I'm going to burn the edge of the zipper tape. And on this side, I don't really need to trim the vinyl because I didn't line it up very well. So I barely have a seam allowance. You can actually probably go down to um, one eighth of an inch with vinyl because it's not going to fray but I'm just gonna trim the cotton since my vinyl is already too narrow. And then I'll trim the zipper. Okay, and then just, it's a little tricky to do the lighter with your zipper when it's finished, but all you wanna do is just kind of pull back the cotton with one, with one finger and then the vinyl with the other. Just fold that vinyl back and then you can kind of get the lighter along it. Like that and just burn it. Oops. And it melts it together. Do that on both sides. Don't burn your fingers. All right, now when I do triangular, or not sorry, rectangular bottoms like this, to reduce the bulk, I'm gonna show you on this side. I don't just notch off like here. I find that doesn't work as well. What I like to do is taper it. So I come in at an angle like this, and I come close to that, as if I was doing that 45 degree thing, and I trim it off. Now I don't really need to do too much on this side because I got so close to there when I trimmed it but like that. So this side will show up better. So you just kind of come in at an angle and then you go in here at an angle. 
and it reduces the fabric in that corner and you'll get a sharper tip. And you can do the same thing up here. But remember, if you cut into your zipper like I am, you wanna burn it, burn the edge so it doesn't fray. It's not absolutely absolutely necessary to do that at the zipper top corners. You can just leave those, but it will give you a little bit better. All right, now the hard part, turning this inside out. So you just kind of want to reach in here, and I won't be able to get all this on camera. It's really hard to do, but you want to reach in. And I usually start at one corner at the top and kind of bend that corner and there is some back stitching here so ideally it shouldn't tear on you but if it does it's not the end of the world you can fix it with some of the glue or hand stitching but you start at one corner and kind of push it like this into <clears throat> that opening like that and then push the bottom part of it in and what's possible to do if you have a really uh, heavy vinyl or unwieldy vinyl is to use a blow dryer on it um, for a few minutes and it'll soften the vinyl up. Um, you can also try a hot iron. I mean, I'm sorry, a hot dryer. I tried that once and it didn't work for me, but maybe I just didn't leave it in long enough. And then if you don't have either of those options, you can take your iron and get your heating mat, whatever it is, if you're using an iron board, felt mat, whatever, get it really hot with your iron and immediately put the bag on top of it and it'll absorb some of that heat and it'll soften up a little bit and you can just keep doing that until it's done. This is definitely um, one of those times when um, having, if you have arthritis, this is probably not a, a great bag to do. I would stick with one of the horizontal ones because they're much easier to turn. But you just kind of keep working at it until you get about half of it through. And once you get half of it through, then you can push the other corner and it usually comes through pretty easily on its own. But you can see I left, I had to have some amount of that bottom sewn closed, but you can see how much harder it is. So if I had that opening even smaller, it'd be even harder to turn. Um, using a turning device, or I don't have them over here, hemostats, like using them as a third hand is also helpful. But you just kind of work it until you can get the majority of it out. And this is like, it seriously could take you five or 10 minutes. I'm gonna try just another minute here. If I can't get it through, I'm gonna stop the video and I'll come back when it's done. But I think I'm almost there. I think I'm up to that point where it's gonna come through. And you'll feel there's like a little release that happens when you're turning and you can tell, oh, okay, I got it, and it's gonna finish turning through. <clears throat> I thought I had it, but I don't know if I do. But just take your time. Uh, if you uh, have arthritis or something, get a neighbor or uh, somebody else to help you with this. Or like I said, get hemostats. The hemostats can serve as a third hand and you put them in there and you pull. See what I meant? That was the release. Now the rest will come through a lot easier. I'll just kind of work on it. And then as for closing the bag, you can do one of three ways. You can use hand sewing and just ladder stitch it closed. If you know how to ladder stitch um, or a blind hem stitch, whatever works for you. Um, or you can use the fusible uh, double stick tape or even the permanent double stick tape, most of that is thick enough that it'll stand. Or you can do like I do and use the Fabri-Tac, the glue. The reason why I prefer the glue is when I first started doing this, I used all methods. The reason why I prefer the glue is because it stays soft. The lighting where that seam is, where the glue is, it stays soft once it's cured, it's flexible and pliable. Whereas I found with the tapes, it creates like a, a stiff area in the bag okay so before we um turn it to the right side so i'm going to push out these corners too because i find if i push these corners out 
Now it's easier when I turn it to the right side. Also makes it easier to turn it. I'm sorry, easier to close it. So I get my little magic clips here. However many you might need, four or five usually is enough. This glue, and I need to mention, I am not sponsored but in any means by Beacon. So I'm not affiliated with them by any means. I just, this is the glue I happen to use that I like. There's probably other glues that work just as well. So I get my clips ready. And then what I do is I run the glue. I do half at a time. I run it along this little edge. So I'm going to flip this the right way. Now fold this inside. And the vinyl is going to kind of fight you because it's, sti it's stiff. So I fold this inside and I kind of pinch it with my fingers right there. And then fold this inside. So you just have that seam that you did before. Okay. And now this glue, um, it gets air in it once some of it's gone and it'll start to squeeze out at the top. So be very mindful of that. Do not leave this sitting on any surface, like a wood surface where it might get knocked over because it will mar your surface. And you can actually see, well, you can't see it right now, but I actually had gotten some on this machine bed and it did it, it did mar it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is bend down my, I didn't trim, you're supposed to trim this wedge to half an inch and I didn't. Okay, so see how it's coming out of the top? So I'm gonna go ahead and rub that along here. And oops, don't get on my machine. And then I'm gonna pull this up and onto the glue. I'll show you again in a second. And you know what I did is I did trim that bottom vinyl so narrow that I don't have enough to fold back. That's why it's being difficult for me. Try not to trim it as narrow as I did. That's okay, we'll make it work. Okay, so I do a section at a time when it's a long one. If it's a short one, you can do it all at once. And I just put the glue on there. And then I place the lining into the glue. And put another clip. And then do the last one. And this usually sets up in about um, 60 seconds. So it's enough for you to um, take the clips off and turn the bag to the right side. And then it cures in I believe 24 hours all together. So just fold that down. You want the edge of this to be right at the stitches. And I'm sorry, it's hard to stay on camera and do this. And if it does get on your fingers, just wash your hands off as quickly as you can so it doesn't irritate them. I've got almost all of it. I have one little area left. So I find that usually by the time I get done to the other end, the first half of it's done. And again, you use whatever method works best for you. You don't have to do this method. If you like using the basting tape or just to hand sew it closed, then do that. You don't have to do what I do. But if you're a newbie here, trying to learn how to do this, this is the way that I prefer. All right, I know I'm out of view right now because I'm down to this last little section here and it's not agreeing with me. It's giving me a fight. I don't know why. Okay, I think I got it now. Wow, that was bizarre. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so it's gonna look something like that. And while it's holding up, I'll come down here and reach inside the bag and move the zipper pull all the way open. You might have to kind of move your D-ring strap out of the way if it's in your way. Okay. 
it, it'll turn much easier to the right side if the um, bag is zippers all the way open. It can be a little tricky though because that D-ring strap connector is in there and you're kind of fighting it trying to get past it. I don't know if I'm on the right side of it. No, I wasn't. I pushed it to the wrong to the side I was trying to get past. There we go. Okay. So this should be done now. So put those away. All right. And now we're ready to turn it to the right side. Now again, it might be a little difficult because it's a long bag. And it's just been my experience that the long bags are a little harder to turn. So just kind of work one corner. You can sometimes just kind of fold it down like this as well. And be gingerly because you do have a lot of satin stitching in there. And I did do a 4.5 millimeter width, so it should capture both sides really good. But I've had vinyl tear at this point from the satin stitching. And especially I forgot to put stabilizer behind it. So that's a, the other benefit of putting stabilizer, extra stabilizer, is it adds extra support to the satin stitching. So it gives it another layer of something to hold on to in the bag. Okay, so go ahead and fold it down. And just keep working it. Almost done. Turn from the inside. I generally do a lot more bags with a slightly curved bottom just because the nature, again, we have all these layers here. When you make a bag on your sewing machine, your lining is not stuck in the corners. So oftentimes these rectangular bags, it's really hard to get the corners to look really nice. But this design would not have looked right with the curved corners. So I just didn't like it with the curved corners. So I'm like, okay, we're just gonna accept what we have. Okay, so we've gotten to this point so far, right? So now this is a time when this little tool comes in handy or any other turning device that you have. So I take this little piece here and I reach inside and I gently, I kind of put my thumb here so I can feel where that thing, the pusher is, and make sure I don't poke through the vinyl. So I gently kind of push, push out at that seam and try and push it out as much as I can get it. And it won't be a perfect rectangle, right? Because there's too much layers in there. And do the same thing on this side. All right, and then what I like to do is Inside, rub that along this seam right here, and it'll help separate it out. And you can do that on the sides too. Now this, I can already tell, is gonna be a little po poofy. So when you have a poofy vinyl, what you can do is lay it underneath something heavy, and it'll flatten it. So I actually used my work laptop the other day because it's got that heat coming out of it. I just left it under there for like 15 minutes and it flattened the bag nicely for me. Right? Like this is wanting to not stick down there, so I'm gonna definitely need to flatten this guy. All right, the last two areas of concern. When you get the zipper, see how the zipper's kind of stuck in there? You wanna get the zipper to pull free, but there's so much material in here. So take your, your, your pointing device, push it in, underneath there and pull put your thumb on your pole and it's one it's so hard to show this you put your thumb here and you put that inside and you rotate it up gently and it'll pull your zipper pole out like that and then you can pull the zipper pole over and um once you get it pulled closed a little bit more if it's not enough for you then reach in see i have it open or closed a little bit now I can reach in and maybe poke it out a little bit more. But see, I can see I'm stressing my stitches right there. I don't want to do that. So that's going to have to be good enough for me. And then this corner, if you don't, if you just go like this, you can't always get the bag all the way closed. 
So you have that little gap. This actually turned out pretty good on its own, but what you can do is you take the, again, you take this and you push down on that seam, that material, and you basically push down and back and you're pushing that, it works much better with the hemostats. You're pushing it into the seam allowance. That little knob of vinyl, you're pushing into the seam allowance. You can see how it went up. It's really tricky to show that. And there you go, now we got a closed. All right. I wonder if this is gonna glow if we turn the lights out. I don't know. It's pretty cool, oh, I like it. I wasn't sure about this proportion here. I'm still not sure. Hmm. I think I like it. So I'm gonna definitely have to flatten that. And there you go. All right, let's turn the light out and see if it'll glow. Oh, you can see it a little bit. Pretty cool. All right, guys. So that's it. This is um, called Rachel. Um, moved over to, I've run out of female names, so I'm moved on to friends. And um, she should be available soon. Today is March 28th, I think, or 27th. I lost track. So probably Sunday, um, whatever day that is, April 2nd, I think. And she comes in eight horizontal and three vertical sizes, depending on if you think the eight by eight is vertical or horizontal. This one here is the seven by 11. So she finishes to just under seven. So about six and a quarter, six and three quarters by, uh, I'm sorry, seven by 10, I said seven by 11, seven by 10. Just over nine and a quarter. All right, guys, thanks. Have a good night.